Hello, if you want to see me go from this, no makeup, to to this, then please keep on watching. This is my everyday makeup look. I go through the tips and techniques that I do every single day to try to keep looking flawless for as many hours as possible, as well as uh, my techniques and tips to touch it up during the day. So I go through the day. I'm going to be bringing you along with me for a few hours throughout the day and then I will come back um, at the end of the day to show you how it really is looking and how real skin looks with makeup that's been on for hours and hours. So let's get into the makeup video. Okay, so let's get started. First, I want to tell you a bit about my skin prep and how I have prepped my skin for the day and for makeup. So it is um, a very important step to have your skin hydrated before makeup. If you're putting makeup onto skin that that's just bare bone and dry, you're going to get a cakier look of your makeup, it'll crack faster, and it just won't blend as nice. So I've done my skincare about half an hour ago, I would say, and then um, I let that settle in and apply my sunscreen, and then that's been sitting on for about 10 minutes as well while I was like, getting my camera everything set up for today's filming. Um, I know that, you know, for, for everyday like practical reasons, those time frames don't work for everybody. You know, the morning when you're doing your makeup, often, often for a day of work, it's, um, you know, you've got a tighter, tighter time frame. So I suggest is to kind of work it into your like getting ready routine where you have a shower or you wash your face, you do your skincare, and then you try to leave as um, a five minutes or so in between the skincare part of your of your routine and then your sunscreen. We always wear our sunscreen every day. So maybe between like your skincare and your sunscreen, you put your clothes on, pick your outfit, right? And then you come back and you put your sunscreen on and then you need to wait another five, 10 minutes. So then maybe you do your hair, your teeth, or grab your breakfast or make your coffee or something like this. And then you come back and you do your makeup. So I like to, it's like a sandwich, you know, you've got three layers. So you have your skincare section, um, your sunscreen section, and then your makeup section. And doing this just ensures everything layers on nicely and nothing pills. So if you ever have issues when you're uh, wearing sunscreen and it balls up and pills, like particularly on the outskirts as you're like rubbing it in, that often is because we haven't let it settle in um, long enough and let it absorb before we start putting other layers of things and rubbing it kind of off and turning it into that, that pilling issue. And it's so annoying. Um, okay, so now I've kind of explained how I always have my skin prepped. Um, yeah, I don't wear a primer. That's um, another step that I just don't find necessary for most days. There, is, there is times and um, areas, you know, depends on like the climate I'm in and things like that where I might fancy them, but you don't always have to. So, yes, I've had a lot of questions about, um, you know, how my makeup stays flawless throughout the day and people comment on my Instagram that it's flawless and it, it's not, it doesn't stay flawless, but I'm going to show you a wear test today of how my makeup really, really is. So, some days I will just do a base of concealer, so like I'm going to be using this one today. Uh, other days, some days I'm going to use a cushion compact foundation. This one's from Medicube, I'm really enjoying it. So I've just loaded up my cushion. And I still don't put it everywhere. I have a very <laughs> tiny Charlotte Tilbury mirror. I know it's very sad, but it works. Um, because I'm sitting far away from the camera screen that I cannot see hardly anything because I don't have my glasses or contacts on. Um, but yeah. So, as you notice, I am putting it straight away in the center of my face. So, I place most of the product in the center because that's where people look at us. That's where people, you know, that's where you're first seeing. You, the sides often have less, less um, like, complexion issues. They're just, it, it just doesn't matter quite as much having that covered if you want to go for a makeup look like we are today. 
but I haven't at all re reapplied like reloaded the sponge at all. I'm just kind of spreading it around. I do go over my eyes because I have quite discolored veiny eyelids. But that was just one little load up of the of the cushion or like half a pump uh, with your fingers just patting patting that in and it kind of work it out as like patchwork so I'm going to use bronzer because now I look quite white and pale um, in the other areas where I didn't put foundation so my like theory is well a lot of people's is you know less is more less makeup on the skin means it's not going to crease as much. There's less to worry to keep on and looking perfect, right? So if you can conceal and, you know, enhance your face the way you want it to be with learning to do it with the minimalist amount of makeup, then it will last longer because you have less on there to try to look, you know, like flawless throughout the day. So we do bronzer now. So this is um, a MAC bronzer. This is the Mineralized Skin Finish in shade Medium Dark. So I'm basically just going through my routine that I did um, for you guys the other day live on my Instagram. But we'll spend a bit more time here. So, yeah, skin is pretty covered. Oh, enough. Like, I'm still going to do a little bit of concealer, um, but I leave that to the end. You know, I can still see, like, a mark here and here. But... For me, I don't need it to look, I don't want it to look flawless, I want it to look like skin still. Okay, so bronzer, contouring kind of in one. I start up here, just above the ear, okay, and you want to bring it down kind of like towards this direction, but not, not all the way that far, that would be too much, okay. Grab a bit more. So I'm just loading up my brush. And it's not contour, okay? It's it's just, um, it does the things that contouring does a little bit, but it's also about warming up my face. The rest of my body is actually, in fact, more tan than my face because I always, you know, pay close attention to keeping my face out of the sun and um, loads of sunscreen. <laughs> So it is nice to warm up my face quite a bit to match it to the rest of my arms and my chest. But it's, you know, it, it, it's kind of slap happy the way, the, the way I like to call it. But there is still like a direction of where I'm putting it. So along my forehead, around the sides of the face. And it does change slightly depending on your, on your face shape. <laughs> Bronze is done. Now let's get the brows on because I always say this, but I feel naked without my brows on. Um, so of course, Benefit Cosmetics pencil. I'm currently using the Goof Proof pencil in shade Rubbed Off, but probably shade 2.5. That's my absolute favorite shade from Benefit. So brows make a big difference to almost anybody's face. And especially mine, because as you can see, I don't really have a lot of hairs there. <laughs> um, so, and I'm never um, trying to achieve an Instagram, you know, perfect brow. I just want it to look like I've got better brows and that they're evened and filled in. So it's just about light little flicks. It's not about long, one long stroke. The front can kind of go up a little bit like this. Okay, so I get one on there. Little flicks. And if you have a blonde complexion or similar, similar coloring to me, I really recommend going to Benefit to get your brow products because they have just great colors for blondes. They have a nice undertone for blonde colors. OK, 
Okay, so I kind of get the color on and then I always go in with the spoolie on the other end and brush it through just to soften it so there's no harsh lines and it, it doesn't look too strong. It's more about just adding a shadow and a backing for the hairs there. Because I do have the hairs, they're just blonde. I should dye them soon. Okay, it's good to take a little step back and have a look at them. So like I said, they're not perfection, but I now have brows on my face. And then another little step that I have been enjoying doing is this Too Faced brow wig and it is a brow gel with color and it is a great color for blondes as well. This is in shade rubbed off. I think it was like taupe or top something. Um, but it kind of looks really gross like cat hairs are all over it or something but it is in fact trying to be like little brow hairs. So it, you have to kind of be careful with it um, and just watch where the hairs kind of fall and make sure they're going in the right direction that brow hairs should be but it does add a few extra hairs and I just like how it just tints the lighter hairs a little bit ever so slightly okay brows are done okay so the next thing that I do is my eyes and just make sure there's no more creasing and I am using my bronzer shade just because I like how it feels like continuity, like all continuously, um, you know, just nice tones on the face. So I'm using a fluffy brush to make the work easy for me. This is an e.l.f. crease brush, really affordable. Um, I picked this up on iHerb. Dipping that into uh, the bronzer that I used just before. Kind of knocking a bit of that off. And I'm doing this uh, mainly because of the shape of my eyes are quite hooded um, and they're, they're like a sunken eye here. So if I put too many darker shades just on this moving part of the lid, it makes my hooded eyes and my sunken eyes look more sunken. And, um, I don't want that. So this bone here, it comes out far and then the, this moving part kind of goes, is set back. And so where you put dark colors, uh, things will go back. And where you put light colors, things will come forward, okay? So like, that's the theory of makeup and like highlighting and um, yeah, just trying to play with light a little bit. So I'm putting the bronzer, I'm gonna put it on this bone, this one that comes forward to try to push it back and make this part, this moving part, come forward or appear to, to be not so sunken, okay? Um, but just in a really subtle way, not in a, a big smoky eye type of way, just in a daily, daily way, absolutely. Um, so I kind of start here, just there, and in circular motions, circle like this, just lightly dusting over the skin. Don't push too hard or you won't get a nice blend. And then, bring it in a little bit, but I, I, for my eye, I don't bring it in too far, otherwise that will like kind of close off my eyes a bit too much. So it's better to bring it out to open up the eye. That just adds some warmth on the eye, gives it a bit of structure, and hopefully helps push back that bone here. So build it up slowly, as you can see that I'm doing. And just because it's not, it isn't an eyeshadow, so it's it's probably a little bit more of a sheer powder. So it does give you that um, workability to build it up really slowly and just work it into the shape that you need it to be. Blend that up a little bit more just under there. You can even add it underneath a little bit. Okay. So curling the lashes, very important. I have these ones from Tweezerman. They are the almond shaped ones. I just find they work 
well with my eye shape. Try to get it as close to the roots as possible. If it hurts, if you feel pain, stop um, and reposition. You're really only grabbing the hairs, no skin. Okay. Like I'm just pumping the um, handle here. Having a look. Okay, lashes. Then for mascara, I'm using um, a little mini one that I've gotten from Sephora Points. This is the Tarte um, Lights Camera Action. No, Lights Camera Lashes. I'm sure everyone wants to say action. Yeah, Lights Camera Lashes Mascara. And I've been really enjoying it. It is on its last days though, I would say. So getting it towards the roots, you can wiggle the mascara and that helps you get a little bit more uh, product onto the lashes. There we go. Lashes. Mascara is a must for me. Brows and mascara. Now for the concealer. So I'm using the Maybelline Age Rewind Instant Age Rewind Eraser Corrector Concealer. This is a light coverage. I don't find it super um, concealing, but I like the texture and it, and it sits well on my face. So just a bit in those areas. So just, just here, a little bit there, just for continuity. That's kind of the reason why I do it. And it's not about loads of product. The more product, especially in the under eye area, the more it's going to crease and the more you, you have to keep checking for creasing. <laughs> so keep it as light as, as you can get away with. Um, I know people do like big triangles or like a big line here and a big line here, but I feel like this is enough product here and then we can just use the little bit left here to do that, that little bit of darkness. You often don't need concealer in this area um, we get we get the darkness here and then maybe a little bit of redness here that's the most common um, areas on people's faces not not really darkness here and that's the area where we get crow's feet and where it wrinkles so try to keep it away from this little section just here so you can put it here and then here um, and when you have a liquid concealer this one's not too runny but when you're using a liquid concealer leave it in. So as you can see, I've placed it on my face, but I'm chatting and, and buying myself some time because it is best if you just let it settle for a few moments, dry down a little bit, you're going to get more coverage from your concealer and it won't just move away and slide away from where you, where you want it to be placed. Okay, so go in and I just use my fingers. <laughs> pat, pat, pat around the nose. I always have a bit of a red nose. Okay. And then we go into the eyes and there's a patting motion. If you're doing a swiping motion, you are moving it from where you wanted the coverage. Okay, so pat, 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 pat. And then the last little bits on the finger can go there. Pat, pat, pat. And a bit there. A bit of darkness in this corner area. I do like to yeah leave the concealer till after the eyeshadow and stuff in case if you're doing a bit more um, eye work it is good because then if anything falls down. So blush and the reason why I did my concealer now before the blush because sometimes your blush like it comes it's in this this region just here, not too high up, but sometimes then when you do concealer after the blush, it goes over the blush and it just doesn't work. You want the you want the concealer then then the blush. It, it works better that way. It looks more flawless. 
So I am using this nasty <laughs> Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand in Peach Gasm. It's beautiful, but this end gets a bit nasty and messy and just explodes everywhere. But it looks lovely and it kind of comes out on the sides. So pressing some of that on the cheek. And again, I will blend this in with my fingers. Okay. Tapping motions again. No sliding and removing the makeup we have underneath and disturbing that. Black something. Pat, 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 pat. So don't bring blush too low. It will give you a more sunken and hollow look. You want to keep it up high, lifted. Blush. And I like this one because it's a, it's a two-in-one, I think, in my opinion. It's a blush and highlighter. It's enough highlight for me. Because it's got such a pearly, iridescent look to it. Okay. Do I need a bit more on this side? There's my blush. What else? Oh, I wanted to do the little highlighty bit on the eye. So at the moment my eye is all like very matte looking. Um, so to add a little sparkle, for, I don't do this every day, but it doesn't affect the wear time of my makeup. Um, this is an hourglass scattered light glitter eyeshadow in shade reflect comes with it, this little thing. It's like a pressed pigment, but quite a pressed pigment. Pick it up on a little brush like this. Always kind of tap it off because then less will fall on the under eye. And I place this right in the inner corner of my eyes, okay? So, like here. A little bit under the eye but don't bring it too low and you go on the top part, but you can definitely bring that up a little bit more liberal. And this can help like open up the eye, just give a little shimmer there. And it can kind of change depending on what light is hitting it. If you don't have a little brush like this, um, what can also work is just a Q-tip or cotton bud, depending on where you're from. And you can kind of, yeah, just fan it out over the rest of the, the lid. There, I'm happy with that. So we're pretty much done. Lips. Um, sometimes I use a lip liner and like a gloss, sometimes a lipstick. Today what I've been loving this week is this little mini lipstick from Charlotte Tilbury. Don't know where I got it from, but it is shade Stoned Rose and it is it's beautiful. It's um, I do always love like an orangey coral shade on my lips. This one is like just a little bit more muted and not as like pow summary um yeah and i just just popping it on like there's no huge science to it yeah always make sure you go over those two peaks there a little bit don't just go straight across. Okay, there is the makeup done, I would say. Um, the lipstick does wear off quite fast. It is just a normal lipstick, so as soon as they eat and drink, it will go, it will wear off. Um, but that's such is life. And everything else stays in place really quite well. Um, 
but I will show you in a few hours time how it is looking when I'm out and about here in Paris and yeah just how it's wearing I will try to remember to do a clip before I have a shower to show you how it looks up close and how it it's not flawless it doesn't stay flawless all day I do have to like um, I always have where is my phone okay so one tip that I could not live without is my phone case and my mirrored phone case people may call it vanity but I call it practicality and this is the case of my mirrored case with my you know best spoke um, like name got it my name on it and I would like to get different iPhone cases but I just need one with a mirror I just do because you know if I'm meeting somebody or going into a meeting anywhere it's it's just you know your phone's always in your hand right you don't have to pull out a separate mirror and look even more extra I just go tilt my head up okay good you know it's just a few seconds most things I'm checking when I'm out and about is that my mascara hasn't gone onto my lids because of the way my eyes are shaped and they're very hollow often they will I will can get some lines especially when I live in Hong Kong and it's so humid that I've never found a mascara that's completely foolproof and then all, always just checking my under eyes just under here it crepes and creases a, a, a bit there depending on like um, if I have had my Botox and if it's like really quite strong and still working or it's wearing off or it's completely gone um, really makes a big difference between how much it creases under my eyes there so I would just check areas like this um, my lipstick I can redo in the back of my mirror and it's it's fantastic I recommend one of these okay so that's it another thing that you could do um, it does help a little bit with longevity and texture is a little powder I have a little mini cute one from Charlotte Tilbury and then the areas where I would put this are it's quite like always a bit shiny just here but it's better to be dewy more dewy than dry because uh, it will just it would just last nicer look nicer there here and on the bottom of your chin just where you can get a bit shiny so that was it um, let's uh, see how it wears throughout the day hello so it has been about three hours since I put on my makeup and I wanted just to just check in and show you um, how it's looking maybe this way is a little bit better for you to see my makeup um, I'm using the back camera so I don't know if I'm like in the right angle or not but just so you can see because um, I'm wearing glasses so there is like some kind of smudging here where the glasses are there is like it kind of settled into those fine lines there there's a bit of fluff I do have a mirror on the back of my camera of my phone so I can see a little bit but yeah this is um, a three hour check-in so you can see so I would just like kind of go like this and pack things in a little bit and my lipstick I have reapplied um, once about an hour ago just because uh, my lips were feeling dry and I just wanted something more on my lips but the color is still there evening so it is now 11 o'clock at night I did just crash on the lounge so I am dragged myself back to the bathroom and I'm going to have a shower and go to bed now but um, yeah it's many hours since I put my makeup on um, hopefully there's still some left but I just wanted to show you what um, makeup is like how it sits on my skin uh, in you know throughout the day um, yeah my lipstick wore off um, multiple times and I now just have like a gloss on because they were feeling dry there was a, a um, my Fenty gloss that I have in my handbag and yeah I would say it's like worn off my makeup and about my nose still have some under my eyes but definitely like more cracked and things do I have a so I'm using my bathroom mirror as well it's not too creased under there brows are still kind of on and my mascara but yeah that's a real wear of my makeup um, I didn't touch up any concealer or any powder or anything like that during the day just the 
just doing their lips again and yeah I'm gonna go to bed now but um thank you for watching this far I hope you liked seeing me do my everyday style type of makeup and I will see you in the next one bye for now